the stories that have been trending um yeah this week it's time for the trending topics all right first up the film the Harder They Come turns 50. Wow. The film The Harder They Come turns 50 this year. The film was released back in 1972 starring reggae icon Sir Jimmy Cliff. Cliff recalls the first time uh, meeting and uh, of course it took place, he says, at the Dynamic Records studio in Kingston. He was there recording two songs. You can get it if you really want and... Let your yay be yay, both for Island Records. After the session finished, he says, I saw this bearded white man and he said, I'm making a movie. Do you think you can write two songs for it? I said, oh, you mean? Oh, you mean if we think? We can do anything. That's what he recalled. So congratulations, Jimmy Cliff and the entire team on this amazing achievement. Uh, of course, you know, creating a film that has lasted uh, for 50 years is no small feat. Yeah, and uh, for everybody, I mean, for a lot of people, I find when I go overseas as well and have conversations with persons in the entertainment industry, they always, always remember the harder they come. Of it. Always, always. Yeah. So, so that's great. Yeah. And I mean, it just it just goes to show the the power of music and the power of just believing in oneself and and just just doing what he got to do, you know. Yeah. And I mean, his uh, his legacy and his impact will forever be felt because if we've gone fifty years already and it feels like yesterday, can you just imagine another fifty years? from now so exciting time yes i love it all right moving right along guys more charges laid for red stripe robbery now charges have been laid against two additional men who were allegedly involved in the red stripe robbery which took place last year at the company's spanish town road facility charged are michael houghton a 30 year old security guard of oakland road and kemar forbes 22 a security guard as well of gordon town road st andrew now they have been charged with robbery with aggravation uh, illegal possession of firearm and warehouse breaking. The men were implicated as, as investigators continue to probe the theft of 1,440 cases of liquor from a red stripe warehouse on Sunday, December 26, 2021. Now, initial reports indicated that between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m., the culprits tied up a security guard who was on duty, gained access to the warehouse, and stole the liquor. Um, you know, things are moving along i mean it's what almost a month now I've, I've, what about five days short of a month since the incident and i mean they've um arrested and charged two persons and i think that we were having discussions about this early and i think a lot of persons are saying well it's good that we have an idea of where it's coming from possibly you know um because we just i, I think that they want to probably even make an example out of these security guys i mean everybody know when you hear the story i say how, how you rob red stripe how you rob <laughs> them them big warehouse you know what i mean so it means that so as jamaicans would say something we know something you know but i mean we just have to wait and see uh what will come out of this and if 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 we'll have all the answers at the end of it all you know a bear things them go on with them Bear, bear things. things bear, bear things. things them go on with and it was not in the right spirits yeah man <laughs> amen <laughs> Amen, Debbie. Amen. And I, I mean, it, the audacity, the audacity to think that you could do something like that and, and get away with it. Come outside. on, it's 2021, 2022. No, sir. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. Something or something. Anyways, guys, fashion industry icon Andre Leon Tally dies. Andre Leon, uh, the visionary former creative director of Vogue magazine, died this week. Tally began at Vogue in 1983 and in 1988 was named the Fashion Bible's creative director, ultimately also serving as editor-at-large. Throughout his career, the six-foot-six six fashion journalist, whose towering presence sitting front row of fashion shows, was an iconic as he was flowing in his robes. And trust me, he's majestic. He advocated for diversity in the fashion industry, encouraging top designers to include more black models in their shows as he helped to shape Vogue at large. Oh, no. Rest in peace, mm -hmm. rest well, an icon. And yeah, that is a sentiment uh, from a lot of people across the board and not just um, internationally as well, but for those persons in Jamaica and in the Caribbean who are in the fashion industry, right. they have hailed him yeah. uh, for his work. Yeah. And so, you know, rest well and, and a I, job well done. And yeah. impact as well. And I, I mean, 
wherever he was, you would see him and he would make sure that you see him yeah. in his robes, you know, and he would just leave his mark wherever he went, you know, whether it was through an interview, whether it was through his pieces. And, you know, I'm, people people will always remember him He's as well. fearless. So, yeah, yeah, man, he was fearless. And, and um, Beyonce's publicist had wrote, she, she wrote something on Instagram um, lauding him for just... Uh, the reverence, mm -hmm. of course, that he also had for Beyonce as a yeah. fashion icon as well and how um, he made sure that he created a spectacle of her yeah. on her way up a red carpet one time and he was doing an interview with her. Um, and, you know, she spoke about how highly respected he was by Beyonce as well right. and just by different people who would have had worked with Vogue um, and him as well, you know, as a designer yeah. and as a it's, stylist. It's so interesting because a lot of, uh, a lot of persons... Um, I mean, acknowledge him, acknowledge his, just his, his vibe, his energy and his presence. But I mean, even like, for example, Tyra, you know, Tyra is one such person that I remember um, in my head. I remember just their interaction and, and how he would always just, you know, when you big up somebody, you always mm -hmm. just big them up and acknowledge them. And I say, yeah, you know, it, it is something that, as you mentioned, Beyonce, it's something that he would, he has done right yeah. across the board. So people will remember that. Yeah. All right, guys. Now, Tonga's Olympic flag bearer raises money for victims. A fundraising campaign set up by Tonga's Olympic flag bearer, Peter Tuffer, well, let me get that right, Peter Tuffer Tofa has raised over $310,000 after Saturday's massive volcanic eruption, widely known for bearing his oiled up chest during the opening ceremonies at um, you know, both the Summer and Winter Olympics. Tafa Tofa uh, established a, go a GoFundMe raising page, well, fundraising page. Now stating, you know, as you all know, a large tsunami caused by a volcanic eruption has devastated Tonga and we are seeking your donations to help our island kingdom um, that's what the page actually says. And it went on to state, you know, your assistance and support in this time of need is greatly appreciated. Um, you know, when these natural disasters happen, um, these acts of God, as people would put it, um, you just never know what the outcome will be. You don't know how bad it will be. And you don't know how much help you will need. And I think that, you know, them getting the support through the GoFundMe account is good. So persons, I mean, anybody, if you can support, if you can help, Sure, go on, support mm -hmm. them. And um, because uh, these things can happen to anybody, anywhere, anytime, you know. And as a result of that, I think that we should, of course, lend our support. Yeah. Because when we have the Olympics and, and when we're cheering and we're having a grand time and a good time, we love to see all these personalities and these people play their part to make us feel good yeah. by extension, you know. So let's lend our hands um, as soon as, as, as much as we can, you For know. For sure. For sure. Yeah. All right, guys. And in more news, reporter hit by a car while reporting a video that circulated widely online by a TV reporter in West Virginia being hit by a car during a live broadcast was met with outrage by broadcast journalists who said it underscored the risk uh, risks rather of sending reporters to cover stories on their own. Tori Yorgi, I believe it is, of WSAZ TV in Charleston. Uh, Virginia was reporting on a water main break in nearby Dunbar during the 11 p.m. broadcast on Wednesday when she was struck by a white SUV and knocked down. The camera fell to the ground and from the outside, the, from outside the shot, Miss uh, Yorgi, uh, 25, could be heard saying, I just got hit by a car, but I'm OK. Wow. Resilience. I don't Strength. know if it's re resilience or she right. just was trying to just keep it together in that mm -hmm. moment. But yeah. um, th that is serious. Yeah. That is serious. And I, and I remember seeing the video as well. And I thought to myself just how, um, it, like, I, I, if, if I was her co-anchor, probably my reaction would have been different. You'd be like, um, yeah. I would probably have to wrap up that broadcast quickly and throw to something else so that I give her time to kind of recover and also right. help to figure out what just happened. Mm -hmm. But they were just there on her. Just waiting for just her to waiting come back. Just waiting to mm -hmm. come back. Mm -hmm. And you don't know the state because yeah. this just happened. So you don't know what kind of state she may be in, if she got hurt, you know, how severe it is, what's going to happen. Uh, maybe, so, maybe because from, from the get-go, from the incident happened, she, she said, hey, I just got hit back, but I'm okay. And maybe it's just fright. And just, uh, you know, that, that reaction that it just, it just, she just said, hey, I'm okay, don't worry about it. Let me just finish what I have to do and then I'll worry about me later. Because oh, sometimes no. that happens, you know. It does. Yeah, it, it really does. does happen because you know that you're, you're on this job. You have, you have certain things to do and you just want to finish it. 
And especially for persons who work in media, you know, you understand. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. whatever happens, it don't matter what happens. You just know, say, you have to finish. This show has to go on. The show has to go on. But at the end of the day, you know, reporters, broadcasters, people in the media, we're all human beings as yeah, well. And definitely. a car being a car hitting is a serious thing. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? So Okay. Oh, God. Well, I'm happy she's all right. Yeah. <laughs> That's but... it for trending topics, guys. More to come right here on Weekend Smile. Stay tuned. All the things to come.